Hello, I'm your host, Alex Freeberg, and this is The Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are gonna be discussing the difference between an entry-level, a mid-level, and a senior-level data analyst position. Now, most people are going to start off in an entry-level job or a junior job. That's just typically how it goes, although some people do skip right to the mid-level jobs. Um, typically, that requires a master's degree, like you just graduated from a master's program, and they might take that as years of experience. Um, sometimes they'll take that as two years of experience, give you a mid-level job. So that is not uncommon. But I'm going to kind of walk through a few key topics that I think are going to kind of give you a good picture of when you know where you should be, um, you know, are you an entry level? Should you be a mid-level? Um, you know, when do you ask for that raise or when do you look for another job at the next level? Uh, these are really important things. You do not want to stay an entry level or a junior level data analyst forever. Um, contrary to what uh, that one job posting in one of my previous videos said, uh, if you are a junior data analyst for two years, you should not be looking for another junior data analyst position. That's what it said on that that job posting. I don't know if you guys remember that. It I found it extremely funny. Um, so I'm going to start off with kind of my experience as an entry level data analyst, and then, uh, kind of walk through these different topics with you, um, to share those topics, you know, what exactly does each level do, um, kind of what's the overall difference. That's really, uh, it's hard to kind of say, uh, but then looking at the skill level in SQL, Python, Tableau, what all, all these kind of main skills, um, as well as additional skills that you'll get that as you get to each level, there will be additional skills that you should be picking up. Um, and so that's important to know. And then as well as education level. So these are some of the things we'll talk about. I, You know me, I will go off on some tangents um, and it's just as it flows, if I'm thinking of things, uh, what comes out of my mouth is what you're gonna get. You guys know this. So let's jump right into it. As an entry level data analyst, you are not expected to know a ton. And because of that, you require quite a bit of oversight. Um, I don't want to say you're going to get micromanaged. It depends on the boss, I guess. But you do need some additional management. Um, and that's not every person. Some people are extremely independent. Um, but when you're in those roles, they probably just don't trust you a ton to do everything that they've asked you to do, right? If they ask you to go build this or do this or analyze this, they're probably going to check in on you. And so that's one of the pretty good indicators that you're in an entry-level position or you are in an entry-level role is that they are going to be kind of more on top of you checking in. That could be a daily check-in or a weekly check-in. Um, and they're just basically saying, you know, hey, how is this going? Do you need any help? Um, and you can, you know, typically you can kind of get that feel like they're asking and, you know, making sure that you know what you're doing, making sure that you're doing the projects correctly making sure that you know that where the data is and all these things. Um, in terms of the skill level, your skill level is probably not gonna be that advanced, right? It's an entry level job. So we're starting at the bottom. So for SQL, um, you know you know the basics. You know how to query data. Um, and again, that is, that is really all you need in an entry level job. You're not gonna be doing sort procedures. You're not gonna be creating any automated processes as an entry level data analyst. It's just, it is not expected of you. If you can do it, that is fantastic. And who knows, maybe you'll get promoted very quickly. Um, but you also may not even be expected to know things like Python or R, um, the programming, the, kind of the two big programming languages that a, a data analyst is um, normally kind of accustomed. A lot of people expect them to know those things. Um, but at a, as an entry-level data analyst, you may not be expected to know those. And so you may be able to get an entry-level job just with SQL, Tableau, Power BI, Excel, um, those skills. Um, and with your education level, you're typically just at a bachelor's degree. Um, there are a, you know, a lot of times, honestly, um, but sometimes where you have a master's degree and you, know, you still take an entry-level job. That happens a lot. And so, you know, with your education, you're probably not having, you don't have a PhD, you probably don't have a master's in like computer science or data science or something or analytics or something like that. Um, you can 
typically find a mid-level role like that. Um, but your education, you know, is not super high, right? And I can vouch for that. Um, and I still can vouch for that, although I've gotten a little higher than an entry-level analyst right now. Um, let's move on to the mid-level. The mid-level to me, and this is where I am currently at, um, and I, I think I am like right at the peak about to break the cap into the senior level. Um, I know I haven't been in this industry super long, but I've made a lot of progress in the time that I have been here. And I'm like right on the cusp of getting to that next level. Um, and so I'll talk about that a little bit later. So for a mid-level data analyst, you are now expected to know some things. And they have a little bit higher expectations of what you can do, what you should be doing, um, your knowledge on the domain and the data itself. Um, to talk a little bit more to that, you know, as an entry-level data analyst, they are going to be checking in on you often, um, and that's just how it is. But as a mid-level, they may be checking in on you once a week. Um, you know, I know just on my team, everybody on my team, in our whole department, I mean, we do weekly check-ins. That's just what we do. Um, do I need it? For most of the time, no, but it's really nice to get some, you know, time to talk to the boss um, and and walk them through some of the things I might be going through. But you're expected to solve a lot of your own problems. So if you're having trouble with an issue, you know, you should be confident enough to go solve those issues. Talk to the people you need to be talking to. Um, and if you can't do that, you go to your boss. Um, and, and so there is a higher level of expectations uh, in terms of how you actually conduct your business and get your job done. You're much more independent. You don't need to be doing daily check-ins anymore. Um, and if you do that as a mid-level, um, that's kind of like <laughs> micromanagement ter territory to me. Um, I've, thank goodness I've had good bosses for the most part. I've had one bad boss way back when. I know I've told you guys about that before, but none recently. I, I've had really good bosses and none of them micromanage me. Um, and if I had a boss that micromanaged me at this level where I'm at, uh, I probably would not stay there long. That that would not vibe with me because I am I'm very confident in my abilities now. Where I'm like I don't need somebody to be checking in on me. I I just don't need that. I know what I'm doing. Um, so you're going to know what you're doing. You're gonna need. You're going to know a lot more in depth um, skills like SQL and the mid level again. And I have said this in the past, you don't need to know a programming language. You don't need to know Python. You don't need to know R, but you will probably earn more money because of it. Um, and it will open up a lot more opportunities because of it, um, especially at larger tech companies or Fortune 500 companies. Um, you know, those things will help you get those jobs. And so at the mid level, I think I would be recommending people, if you haven't already, to learn either Python, excuse me or are um, in order to either get that job, but it's kind of, it's starting to be expected at that level to know those things. Excuse me, I was taking a drink of my coffee. Some people, I just found out, I, I don't know why I didn't know this, but some people just listen to this. They don't watch me. So I could be doing random things with my hands um, and they would never know. But Sometimes I take long time sipping my coffee and people have to check their phones to make sure that they, that it didn't like stop. Um, so I've had people message me and tell me that before they're like, Hey, like, I appreciate you drinking coffee. It's just, I keep thinking that <laughs> the show's over or it cut off or my earphones got unplugged or something. Um, so I'm super sorry about that. It, it, it I don't know what to do about that. I'm just going to say, I'm sorry. Um, so you're going to need to know, I, I do recommend at mid-level, after about two years in the industry, when you're about to break into that mid-level um, job, I do recommend picking up most likely Python, that's my personal recommendation, or R, whichever one your company or your industry prefers or you prefer. So the, the skill level is going to be higher. So for SQL, um, you know, you're probably going to start working a little bit, you know, again, it depends on your company. But you could be working a lot more with temp tables. You should be uh, maybe even doing some automated reports. You could be working with stored procedures. Um, you might be QAing a little bit more advanced code 
doing some window functions. Uh, there's a lot of things beyond the basics that entry level, only entry level people know um, for the most part. You're gonna be doing a little bit more advanced things or you should be at that level. Um, and you know that's why they have these technical interviews for a lot of these data analyst jobs is because they wanna make sure that you're at the level of a mid-level uh, data analyst. They don't want to be hiring somebody who just knows the basics. Um, and so, you know, that's where you should be. That's the difference between an entry level and a mid level skill wise, education wise, you could still be just a bachelor's degree. Um, you know, but this definitely, when you start hitting mid level, I think a lot of people start thinking, you know, if I want to get to the next stage, I'm going to need to go back and get a master's. That's where I'm at right now. Full disclosure. Like I'm looking at master's degrees as we speak, thinking about when I want to apply, um, when I want to go, because, uh, Although I believe and I'm fairly certain I will make it to the senior level, um, you know, within the next two, maybe three years, I want to be able to get even further, right? I want to go into management, you know, director level roles, senior VP, CEO, like those, that's my trajectory. That's where I want to go eventually. Um, but, you know, the education level has to be there. And so if I'm sitting at a senior level for five, six, seven, eight years, and I still have just a bachelor's degree, um, you know, maybe that's not a bad thing, but personally, I want to be advancing in my education to not only know the skills, but also back it up with a degree. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but in terms of what they do, a, a, you know, we're gonna, now we're gonna switch over to the senior level. Um, that's just the education for, that was the education for mid-level. It's just, you should be thinking about or maybe even getting um, a master's at this point, if that is an option for you. So let's move on to the senior level. My my favorite, because this is um, the you know this is the peak for a data analyst. You know, you can there's some different titles. They could be a principal data analyst, a lead data analyst, or it could be a senior level data analyst. Those are kind of like I think the main titles for that kind of seniority level. So for a senior level data analyst, you are going to be expected to be very good at everything that we just discussed. You're gonna to need to be very good at SQL um, and you're gonna be needing to know advanced um, topics. Um, everything that I mentioned in the mid-level, but just even more, right? Uh, you will, will most likely be expected to be creating some type of automated processes, automated reporting. Um, you'll definitely be working with, well, I say definitely, but for my industry or my job at least, you'll be working a lot with sort procedures, analyzing the data at a very high level. Um, you know, again, everything that we discussed except just even more advanced. Um, so with Python, Python for a senior level role or R for a senior level role is pretty much required. Um, again, it just depends on the company. If your company doesn't value that or use it, then you may not need that. But if you are at a company that does use it, um, and you don't know that skill, it'd be very, very difficult to rise up to a higher level. And if you're at a mid-level and you're trying to get to a senior level role at a different company, you know, it only benefits you in the long run. So um, back to kind of what the other things we talked about with the other levels, in this level, you are expected to basically be on your own. Um, you know, you come in for the check-ins, you'll, you'll, if you meet with your boss weekly or monthly, you do those things. But besides that, you are handling just about everything by yourself, right? You don't need a lot of help. And in fact, you're probably going to start taking on, um, I don't want to say like mentees, but you'll be um, maybe even mentoring the um, incoming data analysts or the mid-level data analysts, or they could be I don't know, maybe even reporting to you. I don't, it just depends on your structure. But they're gonna be looking up to you and for questions. And they're gonna be coming to you with questions. They're gonna say, you know the data better than anybody. Can you explain this to me? Um, in the entry-level role, nobody's gonna be asking you that. In the mid-level role, some people might be starting to be coming to you, um, you know, hey, do you know about this? Um, you know, have you heard of this? In the senior-level role, they're like, hey, I know you know about this. Can you explain this to me? Uh, uh, how, how do I go and access this? How do, what, do I, what do I do for this? Um, that's gonna become a lot more common as a senior analyst. And that's because you're a senior level role. You're expected to know 
just about everything as it pertains to the data, how it's acquired, what it's used for, what products it goes into, um, the, the, how the data is transformed, right? These are the things that you have to know because if heads of departments or, or you know, people you're working with need to know these things, you don't want to have to go ask your boss. That kind of defeats the purpose of being a senior level role. You need to be able to answer all these questions on your own. For skill level, um, I talked a little bit about the SQL. Um, for the Python, you know, you should be very comfortable in, in a programming language, or you know, I said Python, but Python or R, you should be very comfortable in a programming language and using it often um, to, be, to just be very um, skilled in that area. That is my personal belief, and that based off the research, I found that um, I might, I'll try to put up the statistic if, if I remember to put it up there. Um, but over 60% of senior level analysts use some type of uh, programming language, either Python or R, which means 40% aren't. And so, you know, they may be using um, just other tools that kind of replace those, the need for those. But 60% 60% say that if they are a senior level analyst, they are using one of those. For education level, um, you know, again, I think at this level, you should be either getting or starting to, or, or already have a master's degree in something related to this field, whether that's computer science, um, analytics, something like that. I think that you should be going towards or already have that level of um, education. Um, one second. I'm just pulling something up real quick. So a lot of the stuff I got from a few different articles that I read, um, people who are much smarter than I, um, which doesn't isn't saying much to be honest. Um, it's not a high bar. Um, and so I think that just a kind of a takeaway from this, I think that looking at your current skill level, if you have a master's degree, if you have years of experience, you should be looking at your current situation and saying, what is my next step? If you're right out of college, your next step is probably an entry-level job. If you have been in an entry-level job for three years, you should probably actively be looking for a, a, a mid-level role or asking for a raise because after that, it's like how many more years can you be an entry-level data analyst, really? Um, so, you know, just take a look at your situation. That is, to me, those are the biggest differences, right? There are a lot of other smaller things I didn't include them because honestly, I, I'm not sure how long I'm going to run. I think I'm already at like 20 minutes. That's a long time. Um, that's a long time for the main part, and and I I really like my other segments of the show, which I like to I like to fit in. So, um, th those are the main differences, and so I hope that that's that kind of explains, um, you know, where you should be at each level, and kind of your progression as you grow as an analyst. That is, um progression that I am trying to take. Um, and when I was re researching this and looking up all these things and finding these articles, uh, which I will try to include in the in the description if you want to look those up. Excuse me. Um, I feel like I'm trying to follow this pretty closely. Um, although I didn't even know about it until this week, I've been trying to, I have been following this kind of closely um, in my personal analyst career. So let's move on to the next segment of the show. We have three segments coming up. My, my first one is uh, thank you to everyone over at Patreon. You guys make this show happen. I show up every single week uh, and, and I do this for you guys and everyone else who watches. Uh, you guys are good too, I guess. But I do this for you guys because you support the show. You support me. You support Max, who's laying right next to me. He looks super cute. I would pick him up and pull him up here, but Honestly, he's having like, um, he's doing that dream thing where he like runs in his dream. I don't want to wake him up. He's too cute. Um, you guys make this happen. And I, I appreciate you. I, 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 I love you. Um, and if you want to support the show, if you want to feel loved and you want to see more pictures of Max, which I posted one today. Uh, it's like 70 degrees in, in Dallas today. December 12th of 2020, 70 degrees in Dallas. And I took him out back when I was playing, took a picture for you guys, posted it there. And if you don't, and you know, if you don't, if you're not a Patreon member, you didn't get to see that. And I feel bad for you. 
Um, so there's a link in the description if you want to support the channel. Shout out to you guys. Next segment of the show, which is a very good one. It is question of the week. Question of the week comes from Mohammed, and I'm going to try to pronounce this last name, and and I apologize, it's going to be incorrect, Buchakucha. And it says, hello, Alex, great video as usual, thank you. I have a question for you. Are online certificates from edX, Coursera, and Udacity worth it? And which of those three is better and has more credibility in the real world? Oof, um, this is a tough question. A really tough question, and I personally think it is kind of controversial. Um, and so take whatever I'm saying with a grain of salt. I am not an expert when it comes to certifications. Um, I have my own personal thoughts. So here's what I think. I think that for the most part, those certificates really aren't that worth it. I think then there's, there's and I say that with a grain of salt because I think they're good to put on a LinkedIn uh, or on LinkedIn. I think they're good to put on LinkedIn. I don't think they're something that I would personally be putting on my resume. Um, the difference is, is LinkedIn is more of kind of a social media. You're showing people that you're working on things. If a recruiter checks it out, they're like, wow, this guy has a Udacity Nano degree. Um, doesn't make a huge difference, but man, if they know what that is, that's cool. Or they they took this course in um, Coursera. They'd spent like 20, 40 hours on it. That's dedication. So it, it can show that you're learning the skills, uh, you're actually learning the skills, but I don't think the certif certificates are as valuable as some people might say. Um, and so that's my general rule of thumb. For these course websites, they are fantastic to learn from. I, I personally learned so much from them, but I'm not putting those certificates or those certifications or whatever you want to call it on my resume. Um, I don't even put them on my LinkedIn account, but if I was going to put them anywhere, it would only be my LinkedIn. Um, if I was to get from any of those three that you mentioned, edX, Coursera, or Udacity, if I was to get it from any of them, um, it'd be a toss up between edX and Coursera. Coursera, I just have a lot of experience with, and I really like Coursera a lot. Um, and so, you know, I just, I just have a bias towards them, but edX is like, is, is very, um, it's well-established. People like it. It's very educational. It's, I, I believe it has like you know, really credible authors who who post there. And so to me, that might be the better one. Udacity, I just, I'm not a huge fan of Udacity. Um, and I can't, I'm not going to get into why. There's just a lot of reasons, to be honest. We are entering um, basically the end of the show. Um, and it gives me time to just relax for a little bit. Made it through the show, um, you know, this is a lot of talking. I talk a lot. Um, and, you know, thank goodness I have a little bit of coffee in me because one, it's super late. It's almost, it's a little past midnight, to be honest. Um, and so I need the coffee to keep me awake. I also, and, and if you don't know, I have many kids. And so they, they keep me awake. And so I get no sleep. So I'm running on no sleep. I'm talking for like, 30 minutes. I did another episode before this, um, the data engineering versus data analyst. I shoot all my videos on one day for the week. Um, and then I edit them. So my voice, I, I, my, is dry as a bone. So I'm just super thankful for this coffee, to be honest. It's getting me through. Um, but now my, I, I'm starting to like, I'm starting to be like, man, all right, I made it. I did it. Um, so I'm happy to be here. Um, but we're entering a very special time in the show. It's the keyword that everyone, that's the only reason people are watching this long. The only reason people just listen to me talk about why uh, I drink coffee and why I'm tired. The only reason people are continuing to listen is one, uh, it's actually twofold. One, they forgot to turn it off. Um, it's in their pocket. They don't feel like pulling it out. I get it um, to shut me off. The other reason is they're waiting for this keyword. And those people who wait for the keyword are a special type of person. They, they appreciate and they understand um, the value in building their career as a data analyst. They value um, growing their skill sets, marketing themselves, being professional, learning and growing. Those are the types of people who stick around. People who only listen to the main part and left, no, they're not going to make it but they wouldn't know that they're not going to make it because they didn't stick around. But if they did stick around, 
they'd make it. You know what I mean. The vegetable of the week, the vegetable keyword, this is going to be a doozy. Celery. C-E-L-E-R-Y. One of the worst vegetables. It's up there with radishes. It is void of all flavor and joy. Um, it's, it's, is a pointless vegetable to me. Why do people add it to soups? It does not add flavor. My wife does it and I argue with her almost every single time. I'm like, babe, this does not add any flavor to the soup and I have to pick them out. I push them to the side. I'm like, I'm not eating this. I, I refuse. People try to put peanut butter on it. I, I think, again, it's, you're putting peanut butter on something that tastes literally terrible. It doesn't make it taste any more, any better and I'm not being healthy because I'm just not eating it. Put it on something that I want to eat. Put it on a cracker. It's like five calories. <sighs> Celery, man. It's um the bane of existence to almost every kid out there. And if you eat if you eat ants on a log, which is celery, and then you put the peanut butter and the raisins, like bless your heart. I I it's disgusting to me. Uh, not the point. The point is I appreciate you watching. I really do. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me. I will see you in next week's episode uh, of the Alex the Anla Show. So I'll see you then. And I'll talk to you at that time next Thursday. Goodbye. Thanks for joining me. 